morning guys. Today I am going to be doing a what I eat in a day video, but it is going to be a bit of a budget challenge. So I'm going to try to spend the bare minimum. Um, ideally under five Australian dollars, but I don't know if that's going to be possible. It'll definitely be under $10. So yeah, I am just heading to the shops now. Oh, I have my bone broth. My hair is wet. I just got out of the shower. I should be able to multitask and talk while I drive. Whoa, that is bright. Okay. All right, we're just going with it. All right, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, conventional meat versus like pasture-raised, grass-fed. Um, so obviously if you've watched any of my other stuff, I always try, I pretty much always do buy 100% grass-fed beef. And that's for a couple of reasons. Um, Nutrition wise though, from what I have seen and what I have heard from people I trust, there is one kind of blogger, her name is Diana Rogers and she's a registered dietitian. She does a whole bunch of stuff on her blog about like sustainable animal agriculture, the importance of meat, all that type of thing. <sighs> I've heard her talk a couple times and say that she has looked at the raw nutritional data of conventional meat versus pasteurized and that the difference is marginal. It is very, very tiny. So in terms of nutrition, you aren't really getting much more from pasteurized. Um, in some cases, the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio will be a bit better and more ideal. But overall, you're not missing out on too much if you are buying conventional meat. I still promote that if it's in your budget, definitely get grass-fed, definitely get pasture-raised. In my opinion, it tastes better. I don't know if that's just kind of like me knowing <laughs> that it's better quality. Um, of course, it's better for the environment and better for the animals, better for the small farmer. But the reason I wanted to make this video today is I get some comments, people saying they're really on a budget. They want to try carnivore, but they don't think they can afford to buy grass-fed meat for themselves, for their families all the time. And it doesn't have to be that way. So, for this experiment, I am going to be buying conventional meat. Experiment. It's not really an experiment. Okay, maybe it is. I don't know. Oh my god. <laughs> really? <laughs> this light egg. Okay, well. I don't think anyone's coming to my channel because of the high production value, so we're just gonna roll with it. So I kind of have a game plan of what I'm gonna get, but we're just gonna go in, kinda figure it out. Um, I'm just gonna do the shopping today and then tomorrow will be the actual day that I am eating all this food and we'll calculate how much it costs. So that went pretty well. I think I'm gonna be able to get it oh, 
very close to five dollars and another thing i think i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to compare this to buying your meat in bulk because if you buy I think when I bought a quarter of a cow that was 100% grass-fed, pasture-raised from a local farm, all that jazz, tasted fantastic, it came out to, I swear, $12 or $13 a kilo. Now, the cheapest, cheapest ground beef, or beef mince, as it's called in Australia, is $9 a kilo. And even the Coles 100% grass-fed mince is $15 a kilo. You can get top quality meat for the same or less than you can get conventional meat. So, here's the haul and everything I will be eating today. Um, obviously, I'm not going to eat a kilo of beef myself. Um, and I don't think I'm going to get through a dozen eggs, but... I'll put the prices for everything sort of as we go along up on the screen. If you're really looking to try carnivore and worried about budget, ground beef, eggs, tin tuna, butter, and that's it. If you're worried about getting bored, then okay, that's a different conversation, but you can, you can do a lot with um, minced beef. And if you add spices as well, which I know some people don't do, but personally I do that gives you so many flavors to play with all right guys it's the next day I'm just about to make my first meal I think I'm gonna have sort of like a ground beef and egg scramble that's that's the game plan it's so funny when you film yourself you realize things that you say all the time I always say that's the game plan never realized and now I catch myself doing it in every video. I mean, it is what it is. I guess it's just something I say. <laughs> yeah, just, just thought that was kind of funny. keeping this just so 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 basic I just added salt and pepper um you could jazz this up a bit more by adding more spices if you like spicy food you could probably even add some hot sauce unless you're super sensitive and doing the carnivore diet for elimination purposes I love eggs any way you prepare them they are just delicious and look who's back <laughs> he was such a hit in the last vlog so we named him nix um i'll tell you <laughs> the whole story about what happened with him so we originally thought he was a stray cat we lured him into our house he was very hesitant thought he was a stray cat and we kept letting him in and we were kind of unsure about what to do with him we're maybe going to take him to the shelter because we're not really supposed to have cats. And then I was like, okay, I'm just going to take him to the vet, going to get him checked out, <sighs> see what's up. And then like, maybe we can keep him. I'm just trying to convince Max of that. <laughs> and I take him there and they're like, oh, like, yeah, he's really well fed. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we've been feeding him for a couple of weeks. Turns out he's microchipped. And yeah, they scan him and he literally belongs to my neighbor two doors down. So since then I've been trying not to feed him because he isn't our cat as much as I would like him to be. And that's the story. So some days he's not around and other days he is around. So for dinner, I'm gonna make some burger patties. I just have the ground beef here. I'm gonna add salt, pepper, and just some paprika. 
and some garlic powder. Yeah, just turn those into burgers. I'm thinking I'll serve them with a raw egg yolk on top. Maybe a whole fried egg. We will see. Just while the burgers are cooking, I'm going to eat a little bit, <laughs> take two, I'm going to eat a little bit of raw frozen liver, beef liver. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know I usually take, let me actually just show you, beef liver capsules. <laughs> and this is basically just beef liver in capsule form, so you don't have to deal with the taste. Um, but we're doing a budget one today, so I have some frozen beef liver that I'm just gonna have a bit of before I eat my burgers. So here goes nothing. Man, that does not taste good. Liver is super, super cheap. I think that whole thing was three dollars for I don't know how big it was but pretty big all right so I think that's everything I'm gonna eat today I just had two meals I ended up eating a bit over half of the kilo of beef I bought. Let's say probably 600 grams, which is maybe like a pound and a quarter of meat. And then I had four eggs for breakfast, two egg yolks with my second meal, and probably about 30, maybe 40 grams of butter. So I'll put all the stats up for how many calories I guess and the macros of what I ate. So I didn't end up eating the tuna I bought, but with things like that, that would be really good if you were out on the go, just needed a snack or something. Um, tuna, hard boiled eggs, cheap, easy. Even just if you were going to work and needed to bring a lunch, a couple cans of tuna, same thing, boiled eggs, I mean, very basic, won't taste mind-blowing, but it's not bad. Yeah, so I think I will wrap things up here. Thanks guys for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.